Greetings, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to this latest edition of Tales, Tales from, from Outer, Outer Space. Space. Hope you enjoy. Check Engine, written by Calamity Comet. Hunter and Prey. There was never any question which one we were. Our ship darted through this distant arm of the galaxy, always barely one step ahead of our pursuers. The captain consulted the star charts, always keeping our path true. The weapons officers primed their stations, always prepared for a fight with our adversary. I cleaned the kitchens, polished the bulkheads, tightened bolts. Most of all, I tended to the warp drive, more ancient than most of the ships. Engineering was not a high prestige posting. That said, no one amongst the crew had ever talked down to me an earshot of the captain. The ship was a temple, and keeping it running was a worship. Outside Gamma Zebulon, we caught a bad signal. All systems fried, some midshipmen had downloaded a bad file. We struggled and floundered in orbit of some cyan ocean world. Out here, in the boonies, we were easy prey, and our adversary found us still under sublight impulse. Weapons went crazy, preparing for the showdown. The captain was unfazed. She asked me if we could force the drive. I had an engineering tuner carefully, so I said yes, but only this one time. We bolted out of that system, our pursuer hot on our tentacles. The warp drive groaned, but we caught the right quantum foam tangents and we made it out. Mostly okay. We arrived weeks later in Procyon Q5, venting something nasty from a tertiary holding tank. Helium-3 or maybe Xenon. It was unclear. To clear it up, we needed a spacewalk. Never fun under stress. Of course I led it. Nothing but gangly tentacles. I didn't fit the spacesuit well, but it was all we had. The captain was my double. She handed me a wrench and I tightened. She handed me a battery and I installed. And the sun shone brightly on the desert world beneath the current orbit, uncharted. You ever wonder who made our ship? Maybe they're down there. She might as well have been screaming into space. Engineering had long drunken debates, but of course, the creators of our ships were a mystery. I played it straight. They existed between 740 million and 1.3 billion years ago. They are no longer active on the galactic stage. Probably they don't exist anymore. Even when our race bought this ship, it was hand-me-down. They were older than the old before we were us. The captain stared off into space. She said nothing more. We installed the new tank and made it to exit system. It turned out it was Xenon. Out in the quantum foam between systems, something broke. The computer said, Transmission. That wasn't something that made sense. Our press gang opened the warp drive in transit, always dangerous, and of course, it exploded. I was right there with them when it did. Bright flash, metallic clang, engineers hit the deck. I ran through the roll call, five injuries, no deaths. The warp drive was somehow still running, basically impossibly reliable. I approached the now open access panel and noticed there was a physical mechanical gears running at the state changes between warp states. Ancient tech, I said. Hand me a wrench. The uninjured engineers around me groaned. We bolted into the starter motor and started it physically, rotating the bearing in place in like some kind of piston engine. Impossibly simple. The oldest of fail-safes. We made it out of the warp with no further injuries. I couldn't get the fifth gear to seat correctly, so I filed down the teeth and installed a bypass. Four gears for a warp drive. Who knew? It might hold. Who knew warp drives had gears at all? In the Z9 system, we nearly met our end. We came out of warp five standard lengths from a roiling blue supergiant. And there were our sensors were blinded. Our opponent let loose a probability array. It had either too long or too short. It either missed us by too much or not enough. The ship was either slightly safe or slightly unsafe. Weapons went crazy. We fired everything. Kinetics, lasers, coherent particles, none of it got within one likely standard unit. Not a single moon arrived at a destination. Our adversary was too quick, too prepared. Z9 was too bright. The captain looked at me halfway through the barrage. Get us out! The warp drive screamed. It banged, it knocked, it made a dun-dun-dun sound that sounded really bad. Then suddenly, where Z9 was, there was black. Then every coolant pipe burst. Then all the power died. Then all emergency lights went red. Then blue. Then brighter danger green. The computer whined. It informed us we required repair. We were apparently still within warranty. Everyone laughed. The funeral laugh. 
It was either six hours or 49 days, still slightly under the effects of the probability array. It was impossible to know which. Of course, it was probably a fixed finite value between those two values, as my second command stated. Probably only 48 days. That felt correct. We appeared later in the Krelma system. All reserves expended, the warp drive nearly shot. Our pursuer certainly still in pursuit. The captain looked at me. She raised an eye tendril. I sighed. We can't survive that again, she nodded. Put your estates in order. The crew grew glum. The captain was blunt, hard to blame her. The warp drive was an odd, despicable thing. Mostly mechanical, old, super efficient, yet like a billion years old. Better than anything we could make. Best of what we could buy. A large symbol, two crossed ovals in an oval. They stared at me. Who made you? I said. The drive said nothing, then slipped a gear and the whole ship shuddered. Sorry, sorry, I said. I tried to quiet it, and in between tightening bolts and cards slipped out, the AI computer helpfully translated the parts it understood. We were overdue for a scheduled maintenance inspection. I laughed until I cried. In 40 Alpha, we met our match, a brilliant, gleaming cruiser, our adversary from the sworn enemy. It broadcast an open channel. Hello, goodbye. Simply, witty, the crew shook in fear, and the captain said simply, I wish I could come up with crap like that. He calmed us a little. Forty Alpha was a little red dwarf, hardly bright enough to read a book by. The enemy cruiser gleamed brighter. We felt the story was over. But even then, the captain yelled, Stations! Stations! Weapons straightened out their tentacles and got ready for the last glorious death ride. I put a hand on the warp drive. One more. It clunked and clunked, and then suddenly it went whirr. The captain looked at me. My expression was dead. We require scheduled maintenance. Elevate! Charge up! Steady! Get ready! The captain didn't falter. We let loose everything left. It all ran off the cruiser's shields like rain off a hot forge. He returned fire, a paltry display of its least impressive weapons, and at that moment, everything on our ship became on fire. Nearly dead, in pain, I dragged myself across the command room. Anywhere, I said to the nav computer. The warp drive yelled. It writhed. A system appeared. I hit yes. Soul, said the computer. The warp drive obliged, as if commanded by an old friend or lover. The captain was wounded. Weapons was gone. Fire and blue-green blood. The adversary prepared another round. And then we were deep in the quantum phone, a million times the speed of light. Sol was a standard sequence star. It was on its way out, almost a red giant. Only a few billion years left till then. No planets surrounded it. Only a ghostly shell of habitats and shards. A trillion, trillion of them. The true Dyson swarm to use the ancient word for such a fable object. Immediately all the censors said, politely but firmly, that we were not allowed to be here. This was the final resting place of an ancient precursor race. Leave, said the censors in unison. Leave, 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 leave. The adversary had followed us here, but even here they looked in awe, powerless. The captain shook her eye stalks. It's hopeless. We must leave. Any fight is more hopeful than one with these elders. I was about to agree, but a light on the dash from the warp drive came up. Orange. Vaguely mechanical shape. We required maintenance. The elders, the fellow race long since retired from the galactic stage, hiding in their Dyson Swamp, they spoke again. Leave! You have no business here. The captain gestured. Navigation began to issue the order. The enemy cruiser sat deadly, waiting. No, I yelled. I cast my voice to the crew, but also over the waves across the space to the elders. Our warp drive requires maintenance. The captain stared. The crew gaped. The crews have backed up a single standard unit. It was well known in galactic etiquette that you never crossed an elder race, not in their home. What? said the elders. Who are you to demand assistance? No shields could keep out their broadcast. Sent at full volume, everyone winced. Everyone but me, head of engineering. I made my voice as steady as I could. Our warp drive is a Toyota GR1109-F. The previous owners purchased an extended warranty. We are afforded an unlimited warranty in perpetuity. We are severely overdue for a scheduled maintenance inspection. We request a mechanic. The elders didn't speak for a full standard minute. 
Even the captain put her head in her tentacles and breathed slowly. Finally, the elder spoke. These terms are still valid. Prepare for assistance. And the cruiser left us, outmatched, defeated, our antagonist done for now. The eldest let us within the Dyson Swarm, and the warp drive at that exact moment died completely, basically exploded. We struggled to keep the ship running until the elders, the creators of our ship, could fix it. Which, of course, they did, free of charge. End of story. I would quickly like to thank the T5 channel members and Patreons. Caspar Arnholtz, Cam Maxwell, Lord Azrakal, It's Difficult to Pronounce, Dragzoon WRE, Holly's Sister, Arcadian. Thank you very much.